Good morning, we're so excited to worship Jesus with you today. If this is your first time or your first time guest with us online or in person, please connect with us online at C1 Church or with the connect cards at the back of your seat. We'd love to connect with you and let you know what's happening here at C1 Church. Thank you so much for being faithful in your giving. If you would like to give in tithe and offering or emissions, you can do so by dropping it off in the black boxes either at the entrance or giving online at c1.church or you can text your amount to 84321. Today is going to be a great day. Let's celebrate Jesus. Good morning. We are so glad to see you guys this morning. We have a, um, it's going to be a wonderful day. God is here and it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful day. And you may be wondering what the table is in the middle of the foyer. Um, just don't take any cookies just yet. Um, we've had some people try to sneak them, Alan Sweat, but I'm not going to say any names. So, um, but we will explain everything in just a little bit, but um, we are very excited to launch Life Groups. It's going to be a great season for Life Groups, and so um, we have some more on that coming. And we just want to mention real quick, um, the church will have a booth downtown on Friday, this coming Friday, for First Fridays. If you don't know what First Fridays is, um, downtown stays open till um, it's 5 to 8. They stay open until 8 o'clock. All the shops stay open later. And there are thousands of people that just walk around. And um, we're going to be there as a church, and we're going to have a little booth. And we're just going to love on people, give people cards that says Jesus loves you. And we have some glow sticks for the kids, and it's just going to be a great time. And so if you are, if you would like to stop by, if you would like to um, grab a group and stop by, we would love to see you and say hi um, on Friday night as we will be there from 5 to 8. But just wanted to make sure that, um, that you knew that if you did want to stop by. Right now we're going to pray, and um, God is here. If you don't want to just stand with us, we know that... Um, where two or more are present, the Lord is there. And um, there's more than just two people here. And so we know that God is here. We know that he's going to speak to us. We know that God is going to use this day for his kingdom, for his glory. And so let's just open up our hearts and our minds to him. Let's just open up what he, whatever he wants to do today. Let's just be open to who he is and what he wants, whether he wants to speak to us about a situation that's going on in our life or whether he wants to heal us, whatever it is. It's never just a typical Sunday when you invite the presence of Jesus in. Then it becomes a supernatural Sunday. And so let's just invite Jesus and his presence here. God, we thank you that you are here. Lord, we thank you that you have your spirit here willing and ready to just rest upon us, just ready to push us forward into a deeper relationship with you. God, I pray right now that each and every heart would be open to who you are, what you want to do, God, and that you would have your way today. God, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Shake and crumble at your name. The oceans roar and tumble. Sing out your name. At your name, angels will bow. The earth will rejoice. The people cry out. So, Lord of all your Shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh. We love to shout your name, oh Lord. And your name, the morning parade. 
bounds before the Lamb of God and sing you worthy of it all. You worthy of it all. For from you are all things and to Sing it again, sing your word. Praise your eyes this morning, seem day and night. Day and night, night and day, they worship her eyes. Day and night, night and day, they worship her eyes. Day and night, night and day, they worship her eyes. to him this morning, straight to the throne. Exalt him together with our exalted. It dies all thee. It dies all thee. It dies all thee. We join with heaven and say. Come on, 
sing, we exalt thee. And we exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh. Let's just exalt his name. Let's lift him up. Come on, let's give him praise. We exalt you, Jesus. Oh, we magnify your name, Jesus. Oh, we magnify your name. You're the King of Kings. You're the King of Kings. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know Cause I know there is peace within your presence I seek Jesus Come on, there's power in that name this morning And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Lord, we just declare that over our city Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I seek Jesus Come on, let's just sing that again, sing that verse I just want to speak And I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I seek Jesus Cause your name, your name I just want to speak, and I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety, to every soul held captive by depression, and I speak Jesus, cause you know. Shine through the shadows, burn like a 
fire Shout Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I seek the holy name of Jesus Come on, there's power in that name Sing shout Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains And Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Cause your name Cause your name Cause your name cuz your name is power your name is healing your name is light break every stronghold shine through the shadows but like a fire How many of us today need Jesus to intervene in a situation? Throw your hand up. Yeah. I'm here to tell you He is. It's not a, it's not an if, it's not a maybe, it, it, it's a fact. Jesus said, ask anything in my name. He says that four times in three chapters in the book of John. Ask anything in my name my father in heaven will do it we just declared Jesus and we're gonna stand on the Word of God because how many of you guys know the Word of God is true the Word of God is true let God be true and every man a liar and the enemy is a liar and sometimes we just got to call him on his crap he is a liar he is a prince of lies and everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. I don't care how much it sounds like the truth. I don't care how much it looks like the truth. I don't care if he's throwing facts in there. It is a lie. But God, he speaks truth and he is, he is moving. When we declare in Jesus name over situations, over, over, over needs in our life, it might not see, it might not seem in the moment but that's where faith comes in. We fight on our knees in a different realm and it moves mountains. The Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 10, I believe, it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they have divine power. That means they have godly power to tear down strongholds. And when we declare in Jesus' name, we are fighting battles that we can't win, but God has. And that's what we just did. And we're going to walk out of here today, not fighting for victory, but we're going to walk out knowing that we are fighting from a place of victory. Lord Jesus, I thank you of all the strongholds that you just broke as your saints, as your church declared your name over situations. Oh God, as we went to war in that song, I thank you, Jesus, you are tearing down strongholds, that you are restoring relationships. Oh God, I thank you that that prodigal child is coming home because we declared in your name that they would. I thank you, Jesus, for the financial breakthroughs that are coming, for the jobs that are opening up. Lord, I thank you, God, for the healing over bodies. Lord, I thank you for the joy that has been released because you are a God who keeps your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
may be seated. Man, today's a big day. You know why? Because God's here. And you're here. And God's here to meet with you. you know why? Because he loves you. He loves you. You, can, you never have to doubt that. He is 100% infatuated with you. And it's also a big day because we get, to, we get a chance to sign up for life groups. And we have, we have some life groups available, and our life group leaders are going to be at that table after service. So what I really need from you guys, and I, I'm, I, I promise that I'm going to try to make my message as short as possible. Like, everyone's crossing their fingers. We don't believe in superstition, but go ahead and cross them. <laughs> but because I want us to fellowship. I want us to fellowship, grab a cookie, look at the life groups, and sign up. Like, here at C1, we celebrate Jesus and we live in community. We need the community of the, we need the body of Christ to rally around us. We need each other. And so I would love for us to sign up for a life group. We have these things right up there. Amy's going to talk a little bit about it later. But um, I want to tell you a joke. You know, I, I, you guys might say, why does he say a joke? I'm actually going to give you a reason why I tell jokes every Sunday. Um, number one, I think it's a great icebreaker. Number two, there is actually science behind when we laugh, we're able to pay attention more. But the, the problem is you guys don't laugh at my jokes. So. <laughs> but no, but when we laugh, we're actually able to pay attention more and release good feeling endorphins. So like, it's like I'm actually st strategic in this. I'm like, I'm not just doing it. I, I am because I like to tell jokes, but it's, it's twofold. So, like, everyone reach over and high-five your neighbor and just say, it's going to be a good joke. <laughs> Thank you for the vote of confidence. Um, <laughs> no, uh, th this, uh, this gentleman, this gentleman, he went to be home with the Lord, uh, um, and he left his, his wife. They, they were married a long time, and he went to be home with the Lord, and he, he got up to the pearly gates of heaven, and, and the, uh, the apostle Peter was there. And he said, okay, before I let you in, okay, this is not a theological joke. I just want you to know. This is completely wrong. Like, but it's a joke. So give me grace. So the apostle Peter was there, and he, and he said, hey, uh, before I let you in, you got to spell the word love. And the guy's like, serious? All right. L-O-V-E. The, the, the apostle Peter's like, come on in. I'm so glad you're here. And so some time goes by. And you know in eternity, it doesn't seem like a long time because like when, when you're in eternity, like you're like, it, it's different when you're in the presence of God and everything. You're, and, and so, but here on earth, about 30 years went by and up there it just felt like, you know, just a, a minute. And he's walking along the top of the, 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 the wall in heaven um, evidently there's some rough people up there that they have a wall and gates, but I'm just joking. But he, he looks and, and he sees his wife standing there at the, the pearly gates and she sees him and she, and, and he's like, John, John is me. And, and she, he, he's like look, looking around and she, like, and, and she's like, it's me, honey. And, and he looks at the gates and he's like, Hi. She's like, let me in. He's like, I, I can't. And, and he's, she's like, let, you got to let me in. Open the gates. And he's looking, and, and, and the apostle Peter's not there. I guess he went on a bathroom break or something. So um, um, John, he's looking at his wife. He's like, well, there, there's, there's a rule. You have to spell a word before you can come in. And, and she's like, okay, tell me the word. And he goes, Czechoslovakia. <laughs> no, I remember in grade school, I always had really great respect for the people in the spelling bee who would misspell words intentionally so they didn't have to participate. You know, like the guy that gets up in the first, he gets out in the first round and he gets up there and they're like, your word is cat. He's like, K-A-T. 
And you're like, wow, that guy just did that to get out of the spelling bee. He walks past you and he's like, I know there's two T's. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that's a Brian Regan joke. I wish I, that was, I'm not smart enough to make up jokes on my own. All right. We're going to get into this. We're in the middle of, a, we're just starting a series really called Jesus is Greater. And we're studying the book of Hebrews. And Hebrews is a book of establishing thoroughly that Jesus is superior, greater than any and every construction, thought process, or way of re religion, period. He's, he's greater. And it challenges us to go deeper in our faith, to walk by faith, and, 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 and to grow in maturity in our relationship with God. And so this week, we're going to pick up where we left off. We're going to pick up in chapter 1 of verse 5. And he hit on this last week a little bit in verse 4, and he said that Jesus is superior to angels. But now the, the author of Hebrews he explains why. And this was an interesting section of scripture because I'm, I'm, the whole time I'm writing and thinking and studying and praying about this, I'm asking myself, how does this apply to us today? And so what I hope today is we understand where, how, how great Christ is when we look at the, the, the realities of, that there are spiritual realities out there. And there's a whole existence apart from this physical existence. And, and it interacts with it all the time, but we just can't see it. So we're going to pick up in verse 5. And it says, For God never said to any angel what he said to Jesus. You are my son. Today I have become your father. God also said, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And when he brought his supreme son into the world, God said, let all of God's angels worship him. Regarding the angels, he says, he sends his angels like the winds, his servants like, like flames of fire. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. You rule with a scepter of justice. You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than anyone else. He also says to the Son, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you will remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing. You will fold them up like a cloak and discard them like old clothing, but you are always the same. You will live forever. And God never said to any of his angels, sit in the place of honor at my right side until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. Therefore, Angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. I want to um, define the word angel in the Greek here. It was angelos, a messenger generally, a supernatural messenger from God conveying news or behest from God to men, almost, this, this, this is literally the definition, almost an intermediary. That right there, I think, is they're almost an intermediary between God and man. But what is Jesus? He is the intermediary between God and man. And so when the author of Hebrews here was writing to the church, and they believe it was a Hebrew church in Rome, they, they would have understood like what angels are. Like the Hebrews have a rich history of angels. And in in, in throughout the Old Testament, 
God used angels to interact. God used angels to literally massacre whole armies that opposed Israel. God used angels to hold back winds. God used angels to hold back rain. Like, like I want us to understand, angels are so powerful, and, and the Hebrews, Israel has such a rich history. And, and you can almost take, and when you see the feats of angels in Scripture, you would think, like, lesser cultures would imagine, like, that was God. It was God working through angels. But they're immensely powerful beings in and of themselves. Like, the Bible says that we are made less than them. Last time I checked, the only win I could hold back is a fan that is blowing. I could physically hold the fan. That, like, I can't do anything. They can, like, they are brighter than stars. The Bible says they, they can, they can they're, they're not omnipresent, but they can fly faster than light to, boom. They can, they can interject into our dreams. Angels can, I mean, like, because they exist, like, they, they, don't, they don't have a physical being, but they can manifest a physical being where we are, we have a physical being and a spiritual, we have a spirit, soul, and body, but what we only, like, we only really exist. We don't see the spirit side of things, but they can go in and out. And, and so, my first thought for us today is there is a spiritual existence that we cannot see. And as Christians, we, we don't talk about this stuff very often. Like, you start talking about this stuff, like, oh, this is weird, this is new. No, it's not. This is the Bible. There is a spiritual existence that interacts with our lives that we cannot see as Christians. And we need to be aware of it. Because when we fight, we don't fight here on earth. We fight our battles in a realm that we can't see. And we believe in faith because of Jesus' name that we are moving mountains that we can't see. And, and the spiritual realm interacts with the physical realm. But the, and, the way the, the, and the way the physical realm interacts with the spiritual realm is through our prayer and praise. That's how we interact with it. But all the time, you'll, you'll see things. Like, I have so many stories of the physical interacting with the spiritual. One being, when, when, when my uncle, he was in the military, he, he was in Africa, he brought back a, a mask that he didn't think anything of. And it was like, uh, it was a souvenir for, and he gave it to my parents. And... Um, he, uh, he was over there. I forgot what he's for, but he, like, he brought back this mask, and my mom thought it was hideous, so she didn't want to offend him, so she hung it up in the, in the, 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 the washroom, the, the laundry room, and, but that, that room was right next to where she prayed, so like, that, that room like, the, shared a wall, and so my mom would go into here, and every time she went in there, and, and like, you got to understand, when my dad hangs something up on a wall, my dad is a construction worker. He, he's done everything in construction. He, he nails things into studs, especially like heavy, big wooden mask, because, um, well, it would, it would mess up the, the sheetrock. So he, it was into a stud, the, the nail. And, and, but every time she would go in there and pray and, and, and intercede and do warfare, that mask would fall off the wall. Every single time, it would fall face down. And this happened for like a month, like 30 days in a row. They hung it up, and then she would go in there and pray, fall off the wall. They hang it up. She she walk in like, what in the world is going on here? And come to find out, they, they did some research, and this is before the Internet. This is before. They, they, they did some research. They asked my uncle where he got it and all this stuff. Come to find out, it was a traditional witch doctor's mask from a certain tribe. And, 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 and so with, with that said... My parents burned it. They just threw it in the fire and burned it. And then they, they, like, they went through anointing the whole house, you know. <laughs> but it, it, the, the reality is there is a spiritual existence out there. We don't have to be afraid of it because of Jesus. But there is a spiritual res existence. And, and the author of Hebrews here is trying to establish right out the gate the superiority of Christ in every existence. Jesus reigns supreme in our earth and the spiritual existence that, that affects our earth and the heavens that we can't, I mean, Jesus is superior. 
And, and the Hebrews would understand what angels can do. The, 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 the Hebrews would understand this. Let, let's just, I'm, I'm going to just read some, some of their feats throughout Scripture. They hold back wind. Um, They've held back rivers. They've massacred armies. They are very wise. They've given wise counsel. They interact with us. They care for, which is interesting. Angels care for our existence. Um, They are. uh, They can hold back rain. They've caused. They they've literally caused uh, plagues. They they've caused droughts. They are eternal. They can shine brighter than the stars. Um, Get this. When Satan got thrown out of heaven. You think Jesus intervened. He didn't. You know who threw Satan out of heaven? Michael. Like another angel kicked Lucifer out of heaven. Like they're powerful. And, and you know, God did not even intervene with Lucifer until the Garden of Eden. That was when he pronounced a curse on him. And you know why? Because he messed with us. That's how much God loves us. When the enemy messed with us, he's like, "Uh uh-uh, you stepped a little too far. Like, I was just going to kick you out and let the angels do my my, my bidding, but now I'm I'm going to intervene. Two angels completely and utterly destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. They, they like, throughout Scripture, they've caused people to go blind at will. They've, They've spoke, you will be mute. And people have just, like, they, they have power. Angels are majestic. I want, I want us to get this. The Apostle John, who is called John the Beloved, John the Revelator, um, John the Apostle, uh, the author of, let's see, five books in the New Testament. John, the, the, Jesus' best friend, saw Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration in glory. I want you to understand this. He saw Jesus, Peter, Peter, yeah, Peter, James, and John. They're up there. They saw God. They didn't know what to do on the Mount of Transfiguration. They're like, okay. Uh, like they're, They were froze because they saw the glory of God, and he's talking to Moses and Elijah, and they're like, what do we do? And yet the same John who in Revelation 20 sees an angel in glory, falls at the angel's feet and worships because it was so majestic. And what did the angels do? Get up! Do not worship me! Do not worship me! I'm a fellow servant with you. So they're servants just like we are, but if we encountered an angel in his glory, I, I, I don't know what we would do. John fell at their, its feet. They're majestic. The point here is that angels are not to be trifled with. They're powerful beings. And yet the author of Hebrews, who many scholars believe is the, the, the preacher Apollos from the book of Acts, I don't know, but He fits the bill. The author here is saying Jesus is superior. Angels are servants. Jesus is a son. Know who else is a son and daughter of God? Us. That's why even though we're made less, imagine how an angel must have felt in heaven when Jesus, one moment sitting on a throne in heaven, the next minute in a womb, less than, like all powerful to finite. Imagine what the angels, like, I don't know if I was an angel, I would know what to do. Because suddenly, creator God is part of creation, and he subjected himself to be less than his angelic host. Because the Bible is very clear. We are made less than angels. And yet, we are the envy of angels. Know why, en- know why angels envy us? They have no hope of redemption. When, when Lucifer decided to rebel and exalt himself above God, Michael 
And two-thirds of the angels stepped in and said, "Uh uh-uh, kicked him out. There's only one God. And then there's this whole hierarchical system of angels in, in, in the Bible, and they kick Lucifer out with a third of the angels, and now we call them demons and Satan and all that. But he kicked him out. And demons and angels have all the same power as angels. So they, they can do miracles. They can do all that stuff. That's why we have to have a discerning heart. But we are made less than these, these beings. And yet, we're their envy. That's part of the reason why Satan hates us so much. Satan hates us because there's no redemption for him. But we, though we are sinners, we get to be redeemed. Jesus did not die for angels. He stepped into creation as a man, subjected himself to everything we go through, and, and, and died death. He, he, like every aspect of our life, he experienced. He could have went back to heaven at any moment. I think the Mount of Transfiguration is clear that he could have to step back into glory. And he decided not to. He, he stayed and died, subjected himself to even death. And God raised him to life, making him superior over everything. Before Jesus died, the only weapon the enemy had over humanity was fear of death. And you know what? It's still a weapon, but it's a, it's a, it's a toothless weapon now because we who put our faith in Christ never die. Though this physical body might die, we live forever. So even if we live 100 years or 1,000 years old, we're still going to live forever if we put our faith in Jesus. And I know that we have to live with the separation here on earth, this side of heaven. But at the end of the day, Jesus doesn't save us for this earth. He saves us for eternity. And, And that drives the enemy crazy. That drives Satan crazy because he can't be redeemed. And, and we get to sing a song that angels can't sing. They love to sing to the glory of God, but we get to sing a song that they can't sing, and it's the song of the redeemed. We get to, to declare our redemption forever. That we get to praise in a way that they can never praise. Because Jesus loves us. Not to say that he doesn't love angels, but... They're servants like we are, but different. The author of Hebrews goes to great extent to remind his audience that Jesus is infinitely greater than angels because he's a son of God. He turns around and says, hey, they're only servants like we are. And I think he does this because Israel has such a rich history of angels intervening on their behalf, on behalf of God. I remember the Bible says this. um, It says that we are entertaining angels. I believe that most of us have probably interacted with angelic hosts and we didn't even realize it because the Bible says we're entertaining them all the time. They, like, uh, and, and they're, too, they're too numerous to count. You think 7 billion people on a planet is a lot of people? Well, angels outnumber us by far. Um, just around the throne of God, they outnumber us by far. And they're always declaring his praise. I remember in 2019, um, I was in my office, and I, I would love to say an angel appeared in, in my office and just like the, you know, like, like they appeared to, to marry. That's not, that's not the story. What happened was this guy walked in. Um, he had a ruggedy shirt on, rugged pants. He looked like he'd been cutting sheetrock all day. He had that dust on him. He looked like a mix between a homeless guy, a sheetrock worker, and a construction worker that's been living out of his van down by a river. Like, that's what he looked like. That's kind of what he smelled like. And he walked in. And so, like, as, as a pastor, like, I, I get people calling or I get people coming in asking for help. And for the most part, my answer is yes. Like, it just depends on the level of help. So there are some things that we cannot do as an organization. We're not geared for. And, but we support people who are. That way, 
we can send people to place of hope or di- different places. We can send people to where they can get help. But for the most part, you know, if they say, hey, I just need help with groceries this week. And like I have a limit that I go to, but but I try to help people. Like if people walk in, I'm say, oh, I'll say, yes, let's go. And 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 I was expecting that. This, this gentleman walks in, and I was expecting him to ask for help. And, and I, I, all of us fall in hard times. I'm not judging. I'm just, that's just the reality. People come to churches usually for help. And um, I, I help when we can. When I, when I reach my limit for a month, I'll say, hey, I, I can't help. But if you call back at the beginning of next month, I can help. I've done that before. Um, but uh, he walks in and says, hey, I just want to bless you guys. I'm like, well, this is a di- this, this conversation is going a different route. He's like, I, I just I want to give the church my van. They can do whatever they want, and like it was like a like a 2005 Nissan minivan, and I, I'm like, well, like, and I, I'm literally four months into pastoring here, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, I I, I still would probably have that response, but I could. I could probably polish it up to where it may at least look like I know what to do. Um, but I'm like, I'll probably actually say the same thing. Guy, I can't acquire property without approval of the board and probably the whole church. To, to, to sell property or to, or to acquire property, and that's technically property, I would have to have a vote. I said, I can't make that decision unilaterally. So I thank you for your offer to give us a minivan, um, that runs good and everything, but I just, I can't do that. He's like, well, do you know anyone who, who could use it? Because I don't need it anymore. And I'm like, well, that's off the top of my head. No, I, I don't know anyone. I'm, I'm just now getting to know the church. I'm, I'm still learning names, you know. Like, like, and so and he's like, oh, that, that's fine. And so we just start talking, and he's sitting there. And then he says something that, like, you know, like those moments when people say something and it makes your eyes roll in your head and you, you, you're, you're praying to God that you didn't roll your eyes physically? Like, he says, dude, I got to be honest, I've been in heaven before. And I'm like, hmm, all right, this, this guy's off his rocker. You know, like, oh, here we go. And I'm like, oh, really? That's, that's interesting. That, that was my response. But I'm like, oh, this guy's crazy. Like, and I'm like, and, and something happened that I did not expect to happen. I got a check. I got a check, like a Holy Spirit gut check. And then this thought went through my head. Who are you to discount this man's testimony? I'm like, where did that go from? Like, because I'm not saying that people haven't gone to heaven or anything like that. I'm not saying that people haven't. Clearly, it happens. Like, the whole book of Revelation is a vision of heaven. Pretty much. And so even Paul said he's like he's had visions of heaven. He's gone to, you know, like with that said, sometimes it's made up. Let's just be honest. Like is people making things up. But I got that gut check. And so I leaned in. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going to pay attention. And this guy was speaking as if he lived it. I'm like, okay. And then we're talking and he gets up and he goes, walks over by my desk. And he looks at like a picture of my family. And he said, and he just stopped what he's saying, and he got so specific. Like, there are things that Amy and I have been praying for that no one else, to this day, people still don't know what those are. And we pray for it. And he prophesied, he, and he basically said, it will come to pass. Do not doubt the word of God. I was like, like number one, that could be a word of knowledge. That could be the gift, gift of the Holy Spirit. He's like, I'm, I'm here to tell you. And he goes off, and it was like three specific things that we hadn't told a single, not, not even our parents. It was just between Amy and I, three specific things. And he says, do not doubt the word of God. And I'm like, oh. And at that moment, I had this thought, is this guy an angel? I almost, asked, I almost straight asked him that. Because angels, the Bible's clear, is a messenger to do God's bidding. And so... We walk from my office, we walk into the hallway, we walk out here, and we get kind of in this little driveway next to, on the other side of these windows, and he stops, and he looks into this building, and, and what he says then, he's, and, he, and he says, I'm here to tell you, and this is why we got to live by faith.
faith. And I, and I can't tell you how many times I've stood on this word and gone back to this word because this, it confirmed what the Lord already laid on my heart before I ever took this position that God is going to grow this church beyond the capacity of this building. And we're going to have to go to multiple, like the Lord told me that. Have I seen it yet? Have you seen it yet? No, but that doesn't, like, that's when, when you don't see things in the physical, you got to look at things in faith, and God keeps his word, and he straight told me, and I didn't tell any of you guys this, I'm like, I'm just literally trying to learn names, and he says, what God is going to do in this place is going to be mind-blowing. There's going to be such a move of the Holy Spirit that you and the church will not be able to contain it. And you're going to, have to, you're going to be meeting to capacity several times a week. He said, God keeps his word. And I'm like, where is this coming from? Like, he just, like, he just stops and he declares that over this body. I'm, and so when I, when I get up here and tell you that God's not done with you, he's not done with you. God has, God has a work for this body. He does. And, and all, uh, that word wasn't news to me because the Lord already laid that on my heart. He's already put that in my spirit. And, he, and, and not just him. There has been multiple people walk up and say the same thing that don't, don't even go here, that don't even know I'm a pastor. Different people have said that thing to me. And so I stand on it, and then we walk back under the awning. And he goes, do you have a card? I'm like, absolutely. And I don't have a card. I gave him a church card. <laughs> and I wrote my number on it. Uh, that, that, that's, that's my fancy card. I, I don't have a card that says, Pastor Ryan. No, I, have a, I, do, I do have new cards. They say, Jesus loves you. That's my new card. Um, but it's actually the church card. I I don't have a card. Um, but so I gave him our old church card and, and, you know, I said, dude, I would love for you to, to come to service with us, dude. Like you've been, so I, I was expecting to encourage you, but you spoke so much life over me and he's like, Oh no, thank you. I'll, I'll be, I'll be praying for you. And so we, we walk out my office to that side door right there, and I we're standing in the door with it open, and I go, hey, um, hold on, I forgot to lock my office door, and I'll be right back. Because uh, I was going to walk, he literally, he parked right here, like if, if, if they're, you know, like right behind the building. I, I parked right over here, he parked like right behind the building, okay? And so I walk from that door to my office door, the first door on the right, which is 10 feet, I reach around, lock it, pull it shut. By the time I get there, I'm, we're talking less than 15 seconds. That guy cleared the distance from that door to his car and out of our parking lot. I can't walk from my office door to my car parking right there, which is closer in 15 seconds. And I remember, like, the whole time he was talking to me, my soul was burning. Like, it was like this excitement. Like, I think this guy's an angel, but I was too afraid because I didn't want to sound crazy. And, and then, like, I walk, literally, I'm like, I walk out under the awning, and I'm like, where'd he go? Because I told him to wait. And I'm, I walk around the building, and I'm looking this way, and, like, like there's no way. Like, it, like, I still, it still baffles me. I say that to say he was doing the bidding of the Lord, who is far superior than him. Like, he was about to give us a car that he just made disappear. <laughs> like, now part of me wants to have, like, I'm like, man, I wonder how long that car would have last. You know, like, maybe I should have taken that car. <laughs> should have just made an executive decision. I'm like, like, it would have made travel so much easier if we could just, boom! But I, 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 and I can't tell you that, that that word from that man, it came at a point in, <laughs> I was three months in. It was like July, and I, I, maybe four months in. July 20, 2019. July 2019. And I can't tell you how much that word hit me because I felt so unqualified, underqualified, and I felt so like, God, I think you made a mistake. Like, 
I, and I, I don't feel like these are such a great people here, but I, I'm, not, I'm not qualified to speak. Like, like th- this church, th- th- they forgot more about the Bible than I'll ever know. <laughs> you know. Like how do I pastor these people that are so amazing? And I'm still asking those questions and, and praying, and I'm lifting you guys up all the time, but the Lord sent a word to confirm, and, 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 and here's the thing, I want, I want to, I'm, someone needs to hear this today. If the Lord's given you a word or the Lord's laid something on your heart that feels bigger than you, it probably is from God. Because the reality is you can't fulfill the call of God on your life apart from him. And I think that's the point. If he gave you a dream that you could do on your own, it's probably not from God. God always lays things on a heart that takes faith to walk in and dependence on him to do. If, if it's bigger than you, it's probably God. Trust him. And, and God gave me the word that confirmed what the Lord's already said to me. Before we ever left Sedalia, people came up and gave me words that the Lord already laid. Like, I would be laying in bed before we ever left Sedalia, and the Lord would tell me things. Like, just I would be praying for this church. Before you guys ever voted for me, I'd be praying, God, do a work in this church. God, you're not done with them. And the Lord would tell me things. And, I, and I've only ever vocalized them to maybe three or four people. And, and, um, and then people will walk up and then say the same things to me. And remind me, like, okay, God knows what he's doing. And God is doing a work. And it doesn't necessarily happen on our timeline. But at the end of the day, God knows how to do it. And, and this, this messenger, I believe that was an angelic encounter. I still, I'm still baffled. In my best shape, when I was playing college basketball, I don't think I could have cleared that distance. And then got out of the parking lot. Silently. Like, I'm, I'm like, like it, he made no noise. Like, you know, when you start an engine, there's noise. There was no noise. But God sent a message at the right time through a person that we, I would have never guessed. I thought, oh, this is a homeless dude needing help. And he declared prophecy and confirmation over this body. God's not done with you. God's doing a work in you, and God's still moving. The second thought I want to leave you, and we're going to get through this real quick, is Jesus reigns supreme over all. Jesus reigns. The author of Hebrew establishes this right out the gate. If the book's theme is Jesus is greater, I think chapter 1 should establish. And like everything else he lists after angels, they're lesser things. They're people. But angels, it would be so easy. John the Apostle worshipped an angel, and the angel said, get up. It would be so easy to see an angel work and think, oh, wow, that was, that, that, that's God. I'm blown away. And, and he's saying, no, Jesus is supreme. Jesus is supreme over all. Jesus is infinitely more powerful than any and all things. So when we declare the name of Jesus, when we pray in the name of Jesus, when we go after the enemy and go to war on our knees in the name of Jesus, we can bet our bottom dollar that we are tearing down strongholds and moving mountains. Think on this. God calls Jesus son. He doesn't say this about one angel. Yet, we who are lower than angels and and their whole spiritual hierarchy are children with Jesus of God. I, 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 I want you to think about this. When you think about, like, angels are technically superior beings, and yet we are children of God because of Christ. And because there is a spiritual reality that affects our reality, we got to fight different. We got to do things different. We got to think different. We got to look at things different. When, you know, when you have those days that you feel like 
everything's going against you or those seasons where everything's going against you, and you're like, oh, it's just one of those days, maybe, just maybe, it's not. Maybe you need to stop in your tracks and say, no, in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever's coming against me right now, I bind. Have you ever had those days where you feel overwhelmed and you're almost confused and you're like, I, I don't know what to do right now? And you're, and, and you're like, why am I feeling this anxiety? And, and we could chalk it up to chemical imbalances. And no, don't get me wrong. There, there are some of that going on. And we, we, there is that. I, want, I, like, I don't like, we, we do have, but I want us to think this way, though. Maybe, just maybe. We need to stop in our tracks and realize that there is a spiritual reality that spiritual realities are greater realities. They are greater than our physical realities. That's why we can pray and tumors disappear. That's why we can pray and cancer is gone. That's why we can pray and knees get healed. That's why we can pray and dead people come back to life. That's why, you know what I'm saying? Spiritual realities are the greater realities. So we need to stop and recognize, okay, why is this happening? Lord, is this something spiritual? And then we need to bind it. The Bible says whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we release on earth is loosed in heaven. And, and because Jesus reigns supreme over all, and then he gives us power of attorney, we have authority in the spiritual realm. Though we might not see it, we can sh be sure that when we bind strongholds, they are bound. When we rebuke things, they are rebuked in the name of Jesus. Church, now more than ever, we need to be praying for our, our nation. Now more than ever, we need to be praying for, for the church to stand up and rise and go to war. We can't just sit, sit around fires and sing um, kumbaya. We have got to go to war because the enemy is showing his hand now more than ever. And it's not just, if you can't see a demonic con spirit controlling uh, things in our nation and the world, then we need to pray that God opens your eyes because it is so evident it is so evident. And Jesus, so he reigns supreme over all. So though it seems powerful, though it seems, oh, what can I do? Let me tell you, when we declare the name of Jesus over situations, they change. And strongholds fall. And the enemy runs. The Bible says, though one puts 10,000 to fight... Uh, though one puts a thousand to fight two, ten thousand, when we come together and pray in the name of Jesus and go to war, man, things change. We turn to too many other things, and I'm like, this is not in my notes. I'm, I'm, I'm going AWOL for a second. We have got to pray. Jesus reigns supreme over all. Because he reigns supreme over all, we have authority over all. Because we are in Christ and he is in us. That's the Bible. That's basic Christianity. And we go to war, not by posting things on Facebook, not by, by opposing people. No, we go to war. We close the door behind us. We get on our knees and we pray for our neighbor. We pray for our president. We pray for our government. We pray. And we see God change the world. And then we get out of the closet. We don't come out of the closet. We get out of the closet. There's a difference. That came out wrong. <laughs> we get up and we go and be Jesus. We become, we be Jesus to this world. We love our neighbor as ourself. I don't care how they vote. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what they smell like. I don't care. We love our neighbor as ourself. If, if, if you would do that for you, do that for them. Mow your grass, mow their grass. Buy your groceries, buy their groceries. That's what it means. And that's how we see the spiritual reality affect the physical reality. Jesus reigns supreme over all. We don't have to doubt for one minute whether our prayers and worship may, are making a difference because Jesus reigns supreme in every reality. We don't have to doubt it. 
your prayers are making a difference. That lost loved one will come home. God is, God is moving. Don't doubt it. But what we're going to do now is we're going to pray. Maybe we just need to pray for just a second. And there are, just earlier, we just did a show of hands, and everyone said, we need Jesus to move. And I'm, a, I'm like, spiritual warfare 101, binding and loosing. There are things that come against us that we don't even know. And maybe we need to ask the Lord, Lord, what, what is coming against me that's making me feel this way? It might not be anything. You might be like, dude, you're just stressed out and you're not trusting me. Well, that, that actually is something. Or it could just, it, it could be, it, it could be num- any number of things. But at the end of the day, there is a spiritual reality out there. And the enemy hates your guts. And he tries to come at you to, to, to destroy you. The Bible says that the, enemy, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the reality. And, and the closer you get to Jesus, the more you become aware of it. But at the same time, like Jesus says, but I've come to give you life and give it to the full. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Jesus is infinitely more superior. So we can look at the the size of our opposition or we can look at the size of our God and say, you know what? God is greater and I'm going to go to him because though I feel this way, I'm going to go to him. Though that, that... I, I feel condemned. I'm going to go to him. Though I, I, I don't know why I'm, I feel opposition right now, I'm going to go to him. We go to him with everything, with every single thing. We could bring it before the Lord. The Bible says, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything through prayer and supplication. Supplication means I'm going to bring this to God. And then it says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So how do we fight? We go to God. We go to God with these issues. We go to God with this opposition. We ask the Lord for a discerning heart. Lord, is there something spiritual here? Is there something I need to repent of? Is there, Lord, or or it might just be out blatant and just say, I bind this in the name of Jesus. Dude, I can't tell you how many times a day that I bind anxiety in my own heart. Lord, I bind this anxiety. I release peace. Lord, you don't give me anxiety. You don't give me fear. That's a, that's a demonic spirit. I'm not going to stand in that. I'm going to stand in the peace of God. And maybe I, you know, this last week, I literally had a panic attack. I was going to meet another pastor. I had a panic attack. I was like, oh, I have so many things to do. Oh, it's like, oh, you know, it's like those paper bag moments. And, and I'm like, oh, I'm breathing hard as I'm driving. I'm like, what is happening? And so I call Amy and she's like, chill out. I'm like, oh, that's what I needed to hear. And literally, but her speaking that over me in that moment, she's like, it's going to be okay. It was like, I'm like, no, you're right. And it, well, it is okay. Everything worked out. But I had a panic attack because I was acting like it depended on me and not on God. Oh, it's all on me. If what if no one signs up for life group? Who cares? I, I, I technically I, I care, but um, I want people to sign up for life groups. But at the end of the day, I can't make people. I want people to live in community because I understand the benefit of community. But at this, at the end of the day, I'm not going to judge you. Any, I'm not, I'm not going to look different at you. I, like I understand it, and I we're, we make it available. But it's up to you. But I was, I was putting it on me, and God's like, no, 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 stop. That's not on you. That's not on you. It's on me. My co. And then peace, peace came over me. There, there are spiritual realities that come against us though and we turn to God and he brings the solution he brings hope he brings peace so what I, what, what I really want to just do as Pastor Andy leads is I want us to pray let's ask Lord is there something that's coming against me spiritually that, that I need to go to war over let's, let's just ask what is it why not the Holy Spirit We'll reveal it. And then that way we know how to pray. 
Lord, why am I feeling this way? Can you reveal it to me? And that way we know how to pray. I'm going to pray real quick. And as I pray, I want you to pray. And the pastor Andy's going to lead. If you're here today and you've never given your heart to Jesus, first and foremost, that's, that's number one. If you want the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, first you got to have peace with God. And you have peace with God by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's acknowledging that He is the Son of God, that He died on the cross on your behalf for your sin, and that God gives you righteousness because Jesus became sin. And then Jesus was buried, He was raised, He, 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 was, he was raised to life, and then now He gives you life. If you believe that Jesus is the Son, that He died and He rose, that is what's required to become a Christian. And all we have to do is say, God, forgive me. And you're forgiven. All your sins are gone. That's first and foremost. Now you can have the peace of God once you make peace with God. There are two different things. But let's pray. Father, I pray right now for your church. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you reveal to things, re reveal things in our minds. Lord, if, if, if we're under opposition, if we're under attack, I pray that you will give us divine strategy of what to bind and rebuke, of how to pray in order to see your kingdom come, your will be done in our lives. In order to walk in freedom from the attack, Lord Jesus, you're, you're very clear, in this world we will have trouble, but take heart, you've overcome the world. You are supreme over all realities. You're supreme over this, and you're supreme over what's coming against our spirit. And Lord, I pray that you will reveal, reveal to us so we know how to pray. So like, reveal how to pray for lost loved ones. Reveal how to, how to go to war on their behalf. Reveal to us divine strategies of how to pray. Lord, I thank you because you are a good God, because you are a faithful God. And let, church, let's let's just, you can continue to pray. Pastor Andy's going to lead. Maybe you just want to worship in response to, I believe, what the Lord's laying on people's hearts. If you need prayer, I'm going to be right up here. I would love to pray with you. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I seek Jesus And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is free I seek Jesus Cause your name Cause your name is power Your name is healing your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Would you stand and sing with us? It's in that third verse. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Cause your name Cause your name is power
We shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy we declare. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Let's just sing that again, sing Jesus. And shout Jesus from the mountains, and Jesus in the streets, and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. All the power in your name. Shout Jesus from the mountains, and Jesus in the streets, and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family. Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. And Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Sing your name. Because your name is power, your name is healing, your name alive break every stronghold shine through the shadow burn like a fire oh Jesus the sweet sweet name of Jesus Lord I pray that you would be with your people, that you would encourage them, God, that you would help them to remember to speak your name over every situation that's going on in their lives this week, God, and or even today, that everything when the enemy rears his ugly head, they speak the name of Jesus and he goes back down. Every time the enemy comes up, they speak Jesus and he goes. God, I pray that you would remind your people this week of the awesome and amazing power that is behind your name. That, God, that we understand that there is such a greater reality pulling and tugging at our souls, God. And, and Lord, that you would reign supreme over all that is pulling us down and trying to get us to walk away from you and be discouraged and to let the enemy rear his ugly head in our situations. Lord, I pray that you would be with each and every person, that you would bless them. God, that the words that you spoke over them, that they would begin to come to pass, God, and that everything 
that you have for them, God, that they would start to see it come together and they would start to see this beautiful tapestry that you have designed, that you have woven together for them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, we hope that you enjoyed today's service. If God spoke to you in any way or you would like prayer, you can comment below or connect with us on our website at c1.church. If you have never accepted Jesus into your life, we would love to do that. All you need to do is believe that He is the Son of God, that He rose and died again, and ask Him to forgive your sins. If you have done that, please make sure to let us know. We would love to celebrate you. And if you are not in the area, get you connected to a church that would grow you in the relationship with Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you next week.